But we can't believe that there is only one way to impress a God who is God of the different. Mm-hmm. It's the Soul Engineer back again with another episode of Engineered Thoughts with Masimba and I. Today we have with you another amazing guest. He's been a friend of mine. I've known this guy since he was 10. He's allergic to dust and that's how I met him. <laughs> His name is Takis. <laughs> it sounds like that one uncle you don't want to be on the mic at the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll refrain the story maybe for till later on. <laughs> but his name like is this, this one. <laughs> I knew him since then. Yo. But welcome to the podcast, man. It's good to have you. Yeah. <laughs> His name is Takeso Tabiwe, and he's a, yeah, he's a close friend of mine, but also theologian, a philosopher, an artist, amazing guy. Uh-uh. Sir. <laughs> Please talk. Oh, he's about to drop a bow on us. Bro. Some wisdom. Thank you. Thank Actually, you very much. The suspense is killing there. me. <laughs> Bro, I was into it. Thank you very much for for the very warm, <laughs> unexpected welcome. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be here. It, 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 it is a pleasure and a great honor to be invited here on Engineered Thoughts. I hope that I can share the little that I have uh, for the betterment of the podcast. Hallelujah. <laughs> <It's> Amen. <good. laughs> <laughs> you know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so still on that note, sometimes I, t- I forget that this guy is studying theology, right? Because right. like I said, we've known each other way before. So he's always been a friend to me. So now like there, there comes this awkward phase of like, should I say Muruti or like, should I just say, hey, yo, bro? Because like, you know, <laughs> I grew up in a setting yeah. where the pastor was really respected. Just yeah. just say, hey, yo, pastor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> A Muruti Brazil Muruti Bramruti. Hi, Muruti is cold. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, mm-hmm. I mean, we can get into a lot of different topics because we are quite well read and well versed. So, I think we can get into um, something that you came up with, an idea that you came up with which is the idea of culture and how it's linked to so many things in our, in our society, especially African culture. So yeah. maybe we can start by discussing the definition of culture. What would you say culture is? Okay. Um, culture is usually uh, basically understood as the society's way of living, right? Mm-hmm. Um, whatever the society is, whether it's church, a community in a village or or school culture is just the way a society goes about life Uh, but there's one person who notes that it's a myriad of experiences so it's uh, religion it's arts it's music Mm. it's 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 relations it's so many things so not only is it a way of life as Mm. i understand it but culture is is a myriad of experiences. I think that's the best way to put it. Mm. Uh, it's an yeah. amalgamation of so many things, right? It's like it's like a jigsaw puzzle. The, mm. Yeah, so many pieces make up culture. So it's not just one thing. Yeah. It it's it's all in encum- it's all encompassing. I, mm-hmm. I I want to. I have a question regarding to that. You mentioned that it's a myriad of experiences, right? So can culture? No, sorry. Can experiences shape our culture? Since it is a Def- myriad of experiences. Definitely. I mean, for example, nomads will live differently from uh, from people who have settled in a place. Right? Definitely, yeah. Um, why this is because, um, I mean, let me give you a perfect example, right? Mm-hmm. There are some people who, who, who build their houses 
on top of a mountain. Mm -hmm. Why? Because at some point there were wars and they believed that that was a great vantage point and they could attack their enemy before mm -hmm. their enemy attacks. Um, uh, yes. So that shapes a certain ideology, right? So experience shapes the ideology, then the ideology um, influences the culture, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mm -hmm. can give you yeah. another example. Um, apparently in China, mm -hmm. um, note apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll ask, well, ask apparently, you. In, <laughs> <laughs> apparently in China, there was a point where, um, you know, they ate rice, right? So yes. when you farm do. rice and then you keep it, huh? They, okay, they still, they still do. do, but ah, okay. there's, there's a okay. English is hard, but you get me. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's hear you. <laughs> um, they 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 farmed rice, right? And they kept it in stores. Mm -hmm. Now, because there was no refrigeration, um, the 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 rice went bad, right? Um, so it it became sour. Ah. Um, now, because of this, it, 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 it evolved into them eating sour rice. So even in times of refrigeration, uh, there is still sour rice. So experience in itself, in one way or another, shapes mm -hmm. culture. So of course, uh, experiences yeah. do shape culture. Maybe if, it can, and if I can try to bring that back home, like, you know how maybe most of southern africa we have sour milk madila inkomazi i don't know what else it's yeah. called in other languages and all of that probably the same thing you know even after the age of refrigeration and all we still preferred our milk to be um fermented built on and yeah it became a treat where it was even yes. rare at some point such that you know it, it felt good to find it and it just tasted and it yeah. tastes amazing yeah yeah yeah. yeah, it's heavily shaped on, on, on experiences. And I think this can kind of bring us to the point of does culture, can culture like lose its original essence as time goes on? Because as time goes on also, the experiences differ. You, you, you meet new people, you know, you get into new environments like nomads. They don't just stay maybe in the southern part of Africa. They can mm -hmm. go to East Africa, West Africa. Um, do you think those things can cause like the original essence or whatever original may be of culture to be lost completely? Um, any, any phenomenon on earth evolves, um, be it life itself, be it experiences of life. Uh, so it is inevitable that things change. Mm -hmm. I mean, who would have thought that we'd be wearing t-shirts and shirts? I mean, 500 years ago, no mm -hmm. one would have thought that, you know, yeah. Yeah. To, to stand in front of people, you need to wear a suit and a tie, you know? Um, debatable, but and yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's debatable, yes. I mean, this is an engineer speaking, so you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, true, true, true. Men can true. just pull up in his vest. <laughs> no way, no. That's off. <laughs> now nah, that's bad. That's off. Track. <laughs> but, but hey, yes, it's Muscle I mean, Monday. What can you do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't die. Picking them out. Uh, but, but yes, um, things things are to evolve, right? But mm -hmm. the question is, do you lose them? Now that's that's where the problem is when. When you speak of culture, there are internal influences and external influences, right? Mm -hmm. Within one culture and its evolution. For example, um, a grandmother will sit with her grandchildren around a fire and tell them stories, right? Um, these stories and these, these lessons value. are there to sustain the society, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Such that even if they face challenges that are different, they're still the base form before they <coughs> attack, right? Before they depart from that. And then the external influences, right? Um, like in a family and then you marry and then this other family has different experiences, different cultures, and it affects how you do things and so on and so forth. So it's inevitable the, that, 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 that culture changes, culture evolves, but it's also possible that it is lost 
and that is a concern. What what makes a culture lost? What what makes a culture a lost culture? What make you? I don't know if I'm making sense. How can you say that culture is lost? I think it goes back maybe to like my original question when I say it, can you lose its entire essence? I think when you lose like um, mm -hmm. majority of it, like maybe more than 50% of what that culture is about mm -hmm. and it changes to something new, then people are likely to say the culture has been lost because you know how we as people are kind of resistant to change because change brings in the unknown and the unknown to most people means fear. So yeah. when, when there is a change, it's something that they'll fear, it's something they'll resist. It's something that they'll try to avoid as much as possible by saying it's not in our culture. I, yet when in fact, yeah. I feel like it's just a fear of the unknown. I agree with that. And, but I also remember something that was mentioned when I was still a kid, you know, when we were defining culture and social studies and stuff. We, one thing we used to emphasize was that culture is dynamic, meaning it's forever changing. So if something that's ever changing, can we say it eventually gets lost? I'm just trying to bring out a thought pattern here. Not that I disagree with everything I'm saying. I'm just, yeah, yeah. It just got me thinking. Yeah, I guess. I it... Go ahead. No, 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 continue. Oh, I think, I guess, I guess if you really think about it, is culture is culture really ever lost or culture just is just constantly changing because like you said our experiences differ like how the world was 10 years ago mm -hmm. is so different you know mm -hmm. to how it is today mm -hmm. because of of technology because of easy access because of so many of these factors definitely so if 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 we re, if we i guess it's all about, culture is all about having an identity, having something that sets yeah. you apart from other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's what people are trying to preserve. You get in a, in, a, in a world where, you know, there's a lot of confusion, especially when it comes to identity and so many of these different things, that sense of belonging can be a safe space for a lot of people. Yeah, I like that you mentioned identity because when a tree grows, right, um when it shoots out of the ground mm -hmm. and it grows yeah the roots don't follow the roots mm. stay like even if it yeah. grows 10 meters the roots don't go 10 meters high um the roots stay in the ground they can rather go 10 meters deeper so i believe that a culture can be lost when the identity is lost right mm. there um, we go so if, if you take me and then I go to Canada, right? Mm -hmm. And I live in Canada for 15 mm -hmm. years and then I have kids in Canada and then I die and I'm buried in Canada, right? Mm -hmm. All my kids know possibly is Canada, right? Mm -hmm. They are more or they less, have yeah. Climate, yes, they have become part of the Canadian culture, right? Yeah. Um, now the problem is the identity is lost. Um, even though the, the you, you get what I mean, even though there's a culture, the yeah. identity itself is lost. Yeah. So that can happen, right? So that's that's when we say when the, the tree goes up, the roots must stay in the ground. They have to remain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So but then mm -hmm. uh, but then in terms of that, like if you if you um let's say like you're saying move to Canada then is it wrong to acclimatize to the Canadian culture to kind of become part of that community, to kind of make that Canadian culture your identity because it is your new home? I think it's inevitable. I don't know, mm -hmm. what, I, I, I don't know what you guys think. I think that's inevitable because the moment you move from one geographical location to another, a part of you changes. Mm -hmm. You're leaving behind a community. Yeah. You're going to move yeah. to a new community with new moral values, with new mm -hmm. ways of life and new <clears throat> problems. And because there are new problems, there are probably different ways of tackling those problems. Let me give an example mm -hmm. with Russia. When I moved to Russia, we all know Russia is extremely cold. You know, we see temperatures dropping to sub-zero temperatures. And yeah. because of that, 
we wear really, really big, heavy jackets just to make sure you commute properly in the streets and all of and, and there about. But when you enter from one building to another, especially big commun community spaces like churches and schools, there's a wardrobe at the very entrance for you to take off your jacket, your hat, your scarf, and your gloves, and maybe even your boots. And that has been so intertwined in the Russian way of tackling winter that it's become Russian culture such that if you go into class with your jacket, you're going to be in trouble. If you go sit in church with your jacket on, it feels rather, it feels rather awkward. Not mm -hmm. that I've been you know, chastised for going to church with a jacket, but you know, everyone is in that shirt because what the jackets are in the, um, what's this called? In the wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I think about culture. It's inevitable. That's eventually going to become inevitable that, you know, we change and you can't say, hey, I'm not going to change because I'm from Botswana and Botswana, we wear jackets. Yeah. Mm. I get you. But it still doesn't change the fact that you are got possibility. Very true. You don't become Vladimir all of a sudden. <laughs> The main <laughs> accent changes <laughs> quickly. <Yeah. laughs> it just goes. Yeah, kinda, kinda that some people they've they've just arrived at the airport already. They have a new accent. What yeah, going on? I'm putting the plane. <laughs> oh, you're not even gone yet. You're not, you haven't <laughs> even arrived. You're boarding the plane. <laughs> no, I think you know. I think in, in earnest, there's a duality in in terms of identity. Um, I guess so. It is who we who we are to ourselves and who we are in relation to other people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, from family to strangers. So even though I can go to South Africa and speak with a Kosa in Kosa, mm -hmm. um, I still remain Motswana. Very know? much so. Um, even though I am open to, 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 to conversing with, 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 with a Kosa. And that's, that's what, what i believe is the beauty of culture because even though we have three perspectives mm -hmm. we can all come together right with yeah. different perspectives and give a holistic view of life then take that holistic view of life and improve our own corners now if we come together we mix 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 we become one culture then we just look at a tv from or we look at an elephant from one angle we don't we don't see the others that's my that's my understanding Mm. Okay. No, true, yeah, true. Yeah. I guess maybe what I'm getting from this is that um, culture therefore also has its own separate independent element of identity maybe one can say that the two are mutually exclusive they can mm. exist they coexist together but your identity is maybe one thing that should always remain from time to time. Like you just mentioned, I'm here, I moved to Russia, but I'm still Katleho. I was still Katleho in Botswana and I'm here and I'm in Russia, I'm still Katleho. But maybe, you know, I do different things, but, you know, as Katleho, there are certain Katleho things that shape my identity, my identity such that if I stop doing them, I probably would stop being Katleho. I'm making sense. Yeah, I think it, yeah, yeah, it definitely does make sense. And we're back. Yeah, so um, in relation to culture and identity, don't you guys feel like, or let me not even say, don't you guys think, feel like this, but doesn't culture seem like a social construct which kind of blocks us from diversity and from appreciating or accepting other people is just something to, to 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 isolate a group of people or is it or do, do i do i have something wrong there like do i have so is it something off because i feel like a lot of times when we talk about culture we're just talking about how people like behave on a daily basis mm -hmm. when from the point of view we probably have more things in similar with other people than differences. Yeah. What do you guys think? Haketi, you can start. Okay. Um, culture can possibly um, be a dividing factor. 
um, in the evolution of culture, right? I'll give you I'll give you an example, a biblical example even. Um, from a cultural perspective, uh, the to the Israelites, right, fought with um, uh, the Amalekites, for example, yeah. right, on the basis of culture. Why do I say this? Mm -hmm. Because their religious perspective is different. Their way of life is different. Um, mm -hmm. You find others kill children and so on and so forth, right? Child sacrifices and so Other on. Other weird. Well. Other weird issues, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that they don't believe in God is not only religious, but cultural, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mind you, it's, it's, the, it's the whole, you know, and these are factors that divided nations, right? Um, yeah. And these are factors that that caused fights between different races and religions and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now it can, right? Uh, but then we'd have to, I, okay, I don't think we need to chuck out culture in order to mingle, right? Um, but, Look at culture as in, okay, here I am, right? But to understand who we are, but not to block out those who are different. Um, so culture will then have to hold hands with other things. Um, but culture within itself, if, we, if, if taken independently, can possibly uh, cause division. I mean, if Katleho goes to Russia and says, no, I'm Mutsuana. He would have died of cold. Exactly. He wouldn't, he wouldn't want to wear the jacket, you know? <laughs> yeah. Man, man I mean, wants to pull up in traditional attire. <laughs> in minus 27 degrees. <laughs> hey, bro. I mean, you can't be... In Botswana, you can't walk around with a moi moi. You know what I you mean? You can't do that, yeah. So, so you, we need to be cognizant of so many things, right? Mm -hmm. But culture in itself it can possibly do that. Mm -hmm. What about you, Katla? What I, do, you, do you have anything to add to that? I don't think not only that culture can do that. I think it has done that so mm -hmm. many times in history. Culture has prevented us from, you know, doing so many things in history, from uniting, maybe, so as to put it, from passing on good morals from one pe one group to another, because mm -hmm. we just held it up on this whole idea, Yahore. No, this is how we do it, and that's how we've been doing it, and no one's going to change that. And yeah. you know, it, it 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 now then becomes a part. It becomes a problem where now our culture becomes our identity. If you remember in my previous proposal or statement or argument, I don't know what you'd consider it. I mentioned that uh, there's identity and then there's culture. And that two mutually exclusive mm. culture, the way I see it, shapes identity. And maybe identity shapes culture. But the problem comes when we adopt the culture as it is in its raw form as our identity. Such that when that culture changes, we feel like we're losing part of ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. that's interesting. And, um, and going and back you? to what... Yeah. For me, I, th I feel like I already made the <laughs> point when I was, you know, asking my question because I feel like it does have a divisive nature. Okay. And like we said, culture a lot of the times is rooted in people wanting things to be constant, in the fear of change. But then, as like I also said, like people move into different environments. Yeah. And people have to adapt. So culture, of course in the sense of identity is a mm. positive thing, but also let it not make us blind to obvious common sense and things that we can, you know, change to adapt to the environments change. Yeah. that we are. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah so um, l linking now a culture to religion. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in Southern Africa, it's very prevalent where you see a lot of people, you know, um, kind of take... A, a, a biblical take on things but mix it up mm. with with um african tradition cultural and stuff things like that mm. yeah cultural things yeah. and stuff like that what's what's your take on 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 that and how do you feel about it do you think it's something that 
works or do you feel like that's something that only brings conflict because there might be some conflicting ideas between religions? I don't know. Let me hear what this guy has to say. I have a lot on my mind, so I want okay. like, to be able to process it first. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maybe I'll process there's, it through there's what you're saying. on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so should I start okay, or you start? <laughs> start. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, Ish, what I think I'll start with this. What I think is mm-hmm. maybe, I think I've seen culture cause a lot more harm than good when dealing with religion or vice versa. I don't know. But now I've yeah. seen in the spaces of the church, um, because I've practically spent home, I, I can't remember a life outside church. Mm-hmm. in the spaces of the church i've seen culture cause more harm than maybe religion Can i you mean give us an example hmm. now that's hard <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to come from the top of my head yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah look, let's use a simple one let's use a simple one you, you this whole idea that you can't preach in front of people with a jacket off you know mm. It really, it ha- I've seen riveting things happen in the church just because of that one thing, you know. Yeah, because yeah. men forgot to wear a jacket. Or not even because he forgot to wear a jacket. Sometimes because Mandem's going to die if he wears his jacket when it's 40 degrees yeah. outside. And he's like, I'm yeah, going to wear his jacket. It's too hot for this. It's too hot. Man's too hot. Yeah, and someone's like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, Han- 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 and all these different Han- things that yeah <laughs> it's Men's not hot. you are going to die you want to die from heat oh, <laughs> there are no yes. air bro yeah. there are no air cons in yeah. the there church. are no air cons eh? exactly. especially like imagine you are in a maybe a church with no air conditioning not even a fan and sometimes exactly. even if there is air conditioning and a fan sometimes it doesn't go all the way to the pulpit and then people are asking you to 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 to, to stay with a jacket on. What the hell? Exactly. Plus, and plus the pulpit is hot. You know, now okay on face value, I'll just keep quiet and yeah. be like, yeah, no, just keep quiet. Let's leave it. Otherwise, this might yeah, be you know, These are the brethren. <laughs> Respect the brethren. But then on yeah. my mind, I'm like, Mahone guys, come on. Someone's really? really gonna die here. Like, no, I'm not even like playing with the word die. They have a yeah. high chance of dying when it's 40 degrees yeah. and you're wearing, yeah. you know, winter clothing. Kind of when a, a, a coat is winter clothing, dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. literally, yeah, it's literally made to, to, to shield you from the cold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what so, right, yeah. it's almost as if it's to it's sort of like a shield from I don't know what in the church, but that's what I've seen culture do, you know. And when you yeah, ask the old people, they'll tell you, how are you hotling? You can't go to a khotla uh, without a coat or, you know, you can't go wearing a hat. And, you know, it ends there. And, you know, yeah, I left with so many questions as to why then this evaded into the church. Mm-hmm. So, ish. Yeah. You, you, you will realize, um, okay, this is, a, this is a tough topic. Hmm. Uh, this, especially this, because it's, it's very sensitive especially to many people a lot here as well if if you look at the books written by chinua chebe i really need to read um, the books and he's uh chinua chebe especially no longer at ease and um ngugi wa tiongos the river between mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. no longer at ease highlights one particular note where a cultural by cultural i mean nigerian culture right a cultural matter hey, those are cultural couple. people right there right yeah very yeah and, and 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 it's a very sensitive cultural matter you know yeah um and it causes many problems i don't want to spoil the book for anybody you must read okay. it okay <laughs> we'll, we'll check it out you know um and there's conflict there because one believes that culture must be respected and the other believes, you know, culture, and, eh. you know, yeah, it's old people's stuff, right? Yeah. But Ngugiwa Tiongo's um, book is 
highly potent with this matter because he literally highlights that there are two hills which look upon each other, right? Mm -hmm. um, I forgot the names. And then they at the foot feet at the foot of the mountains where they meet, right? Yeah. There is a river that divides them. On one mountain, um, uh, the 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 Christians or, or the born again, uh, I think it's Kenyan. I forgot the nationality, but the born again Christians live there, and the other traditionalists live on the other mountain. Mm. All are one community, but divided by religion and culture. Yeah. Now, what you will notice is that the problem is that the traditionalists feel that the Christians have denied who they are, and the Christians believe that these are are, are primitive, right? Now, heathens. what mm. they are heathens, that's mm. the word. Now, if you notice what evolves, because the religion culture tension is really painful, because if you look at history, um, yeah. especially of the Christian church, yeah, the church, I don't mean one denomination, the whole, the the whole Christian body. movement, the whole Christian movement, mm. its inception in Africa, especially in the foot of Africa. Mm. Um, some actually introduce Christianity to make uh, natives better slaves, right? Um, so that's why they will... Unfortunately. Exactly. That's why they'll, they'll, they'll emphasize matters such as uh, slaves or servants obey your masters, mm -hmm. right? That's why there's emphasis on matters of humility. Don't fight, right? Don't, 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 don't protest. Um, that's why you find uh, matters of poverty, right? That's why you sing songs like, give me Jesus. You can have all this wealth, but give me give Jesus. Me Jesus. Right? Mm. That's why I forgot who said this, but he said, we had the land and they had the Bible. They said, close your Ish. eyes, let us pray. When we said, amen, we had the Bible. They had, they they had, had the land. land. So, <laughs> so, 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 so actually <laughs> religion then becomes a trade unit, mm. right? For us to benefit, we give them, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at religion, it is attached to culture. So that mm -hmm. is why when we, when we say um, one cannot stand before us without a suit and tie, it is attached to the culture of those who brought us that religion or brought that religion to us, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you go to England, right, a very popular guy, if you go to England and you always wear African attire, if you have that, um, if you're part of the elite, you will have influence over some people who will want to wear what you're wearing, not because they they like it, but because it's attached to a name or a but superior that's who you are. name. You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, but you become a brand. You, you become a brand. Yeah, you, know? you become a brand. Yeah, exactly. So Christianity. I'll say Christianity because that's the only one I can account for. Uh, mm. Christianity then becomes a brand, you know, um, mm. and it comes to us. So I believe it's Steve Biko who said that it is an insult to God who made a black man for a black man to act like a white man to impress God. Well, of course, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So what I believe in, in terms of religion and culture, okay, I may be going too far. <laughs> go, go, but go deeper. What... Go what, deep, go what deep. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I, I go deep? What I believe in terms of religion and culture, yeah, is that when religion comes to culture, right? Mm -hmm. I'll give an example. When religion comes to Batuan, um, it must the God is the same, ne? Always. Um, but we can't believe that there is only one way to impress a God who is God of the different. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. So you're going to something I'm interested in right there. I can't, okay. We'll, we'll, but let me yeah, just say, yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. sing a, um, like the song, Holy, Holy, Holy. Ne? It's beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful understanding, but it's difficult for us for some people to understand because the more majestic 
something is a subject is right the more the 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 greater the sound they make to honor that subject the div- and yeah. i noticed the diverse you know? it be- the more diverse it becomes to try and express that form of reverence towards it mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. can i just interject there for a minute please go on please. um you are right i'll use the whole example yeah holy 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 you know uh lord god almighty you're talking about that one right mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. that's an english hymn right and you know it's played it in the cathedrals and you know you know you could hear probably that whoever was writing it that's how he envisioned the angels to be singing it mm-hmm. now if you take those same words we're gonna rip off the melody we're gonna rip off all the li- not the lyrics sorry we're gonna rip off the way it sounds <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. the composition, and then we move that word, those words to Russian. Mona, it sounds totally different. If you guys mm-hmm. have time, and maybe to my listeners out there, you should listen to Russian Orthodox hymns. I'm fortunate enough to be in the church choir this side, and a large portion of the songs we sing are from Orthodox hymns. There's, uh, I'll look for a song that has "Holy, Holy, Holy" in it, maybe one day. And I'll show it mm. to you guys. Mm. It sounds totally different. Mm. And you can tell this is Russian. And you can tell this is the way Russians are trying to express the reverence of God. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Tchaikovsky is a good source. Uh, Pyotr yes. Tchaikovsky. He wrote a lot of Russian Orthodox hymns. You can check him out. And then when you move down to, down to South of Africa, the, 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 the game changes altogether again. We have a whole way to express reverence. What I've noticed, I might be wrong here and correct me. We don't really have words for holy, 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 but it becomes a deep and poignant hum or a sort of like, have you ever heard when a powerful Timomomo dog like at church service? Yeah. Like, Yo, that, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah it, yeah we we sort of like run out of words to to like even thank you say the word holy holy you feel like that doesn't even describe to the type of god what no. and that's what i notice you know that divergence in 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 culture and that's present in music which shapes our culture and maybe overall our overall identity mm. Mm. Yeah, but I really get it when you guys are talking about how um, how how culture has been commercialized, especially like even if you look way before the whole colonization thing, mm-hmm. if you look into into how the 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 English Christians, you know, were going on these um, what are they called on these escapades where they would you know invade certain lands and they would come in the name of the Lord. Or even if you look at how the Roman Catholic Church, you know, went into places like Spain and kind of gave them the Christianity culture, you get, mm. you know, with the with the white Jesus, with the paint glass um, cathedrals and stuff like that. Yeah. And you see that adaptation in so many different places. So even even in South America, you probably see something <laughs> similar, like to the to the to the Spanish type of. Idea Portuguese Spanish idea yeah yeah yes, yeah yes, because yes. they they were colonized by the by the Spanish and the Portuguese mm. so yeah I think I agree when it comes to the way um our, our idea of Christianity has been influenced by the people who brought it to us maybe mm-hmm. you might realize that in Ethiopia for example or or, or in places like that mm-hmm. their idea of Christianity might be slightly different to us because the the the, the, the gospel came to them at a, at a, from a different type of people. It came maybe from the Jews um, yeah. who, who the, went to those areas. Yeah, uh, the Ethiopians. The Ethiopians, and, yes. And yeah, yeah, and, and all those people. So you find, yeah, and all those people from Cyrene and stuff like that. So yeah. you find out that maybe the idea of Christianity, if you actually go to Ethiopia, it will more probably be, be more Judaic if, if, yeah. if, if, if you think about it. So yeah, yeah I guess you're right. I agree. Yeah. So even like despite religion, um, going back to, to, to 
how we've been influenced in Southern Africa. Um, can you say that there has been a link also with education? Because you find out a lot of times, even in our syllabi about history, it's mostly about European history and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And there's never really a, a, a an in-depth study into African yeah. history, unless maybe you get into university, or even when you're studying a foreign language, you are not studying something like Swahili or Arabic that other Africans are learning, but instead you're learning French, French. you're learning German, you're learning all these different things. Yeah. What are your thoughts yeah. on the, 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 the external influence on education in Southern Africa? You know, this one, mm. this this one pains me, ne? Yeah, yeah, it pains me as well because I'm. This one I have something to me. say that's painful. Because it's without education, anything dies, right? Everything if dies. You don't teach me how to feed a dog; the dog will die. It, you know, it, definitely. It yeah. You know, it's it's simple as that. If you don't sure. teach me how to climb a horse, it will climb me. Great. something will go wrong with, <laughs> without without proper education yeah, yeah. Mess. let me give you a few examples before I, I i i address the issue if you look at jewish culture right mm -hmm. jewish culture i mean ancient jewish culture as of okay okay not, record not right? these yeah. big money hogs <laughs> money, money. Hey, those guys eat money. Why, 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 are you hate, why are you hating on the drip? I'm not no? hating on them. I'm just saying they eat money. Drip Somewhere. is forever. <laughs> Imagine you own you know, a whole banking system, dog. <laughs> and that that one is will get there. That one is a topic for another day. <laughs> but yeah. if you look at ancient Jewish culture, education was at the core, such that the five mm -hmm. books of Moses right or, or as we believe the books of moses the what they call the torah mm -hmm. mm. uh, the genesis exodus leviticus numbers deuteronomy mm. were the foundation of the education right yeah because they believe that the law is the foundation of of, of, of of the education right after that then you branch into different sectors so one will become a scribe another will become this another will become ah. this that's where you you get some of these hierarchical positions mm. um in in especially in the temple right um then you have families training uh carpenters you know uh, mm -hmm. joseph as a carpenter jesus you know stuff stuff like that right yeah apparently in the ottoman empire right uh, that's long ago oh, yeah, around ottoman. turkey there that was um, man Side note: there were, there were, Those guys were those guys in modern history. They mm. nailed it. That those guys, yeah. But yeah, those guys. Yo, let me not get derailed too much. I Chico. mean, they, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, what mm. happened was they would take a child one on one, yeah, and try to figure out where this child is. Right. Mm -hmm. So if they see Katleho is bound to be an engineer, he is passionate. He, his abilities, his passions and all that, you know, the, the vibes, you know, the vibes, you, there's, there's actually a saying in Stwana that says, well, translated, uh, a child, a person's passions and, and way and road is seen while they're a child, right? Um, Can you please say it in Stwana? Saba, well, Stwana, dog. <laughs> I'm not too sure. So I don't want to risk it. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Better safe than sorry. Always. Um, yeah. But I, it's there. But I'm just. It's just been a while. So okay. <laughs> but yeah. the, the 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 issue here is well. So so they were training this child in this role, right? Um, in this way to make sure that when they get to a position where they are ready to do, they are more than able to do. Right. The road is Here's already laid out for them. Exactly. Here's my mm -hmm. concern. In about grade four or five, I remember yeah. in one textbook, um, it was talking about Swana culture. I don't remember which subject it is. The way it paints the matter of coloniality is that we were blessed to have people come to us and introduce their culture to us, right? Mm -hmm. This is how it will put it. 
when they realized that we didn't have 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 shoes they gave us shoes um they you know they gave us cakes and now we can eat cake and you know mm. such such things now that may be true but it doesn't paint a full picture you know i believe that education and culture intertwined remember i noted that a grandmother sits around the fire with her grandchildren and tells tell stories. stories a father will 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 go into action with the sons and show them how to do certain things right mm-hmm. and tell them how to do certain things that was education right such yeah. that even if the community moves from one geographical area to another they are ready to tackle those challenges even before they know them right with the They'll current and two l- kids they have Huh? Yes. With the current toolkit with, they have, yeah. With the current toolkit they have, all they'll need to do is upgrade it. Mm. So, so if it's a if it's an arrow, I know this won't make sense, but if it's an arrow, if it will need to be bent, they will bend it and make sure it cares. Well, what? Definitely. Uh, physics physics doesn't make sense there, but you get me. <laughs> so, the my 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 strife with education is that it neglects the identity of those who are yo bro i'm on a podcast yeah it's cool just yeah yeah it it neglects the 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 reality of those it's educating so i will learn x plus y equals c i will but i'm supposed to be a lawyer you know um what will i do with x plus y equals i'm not saying it's wrong to learn right i have something i have something uh, to say about that also I'll, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it. Okay. Let me just close and then you jump in. Yeah. You cannot teach a fish to climb a tree. Very unless true. Unless you want it to think it is stupid. Very true. Do you then think that, let's say, whoever was trying to implement whatever they were trying to implement into Africa was trying to sit, was trying to give a picture of Africa being stupid or paint this picture that they are stupid therefore we should be the ones directing them you know when 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 you want to colonize when you want to colonize yeah there are certain key <laughs> there are certain key areas that you attack mm-hmm. um, economy education especially and social order yeah educate by educating you make sure you make them believe that um, i'll give you an example um when the slaves were in the u.s apparently there's what they call the slave bible the slave bible oh removes, i watched the documentary on you it heard, you, you saw that you saw the video yeah it removed all verses and chapters and books that made reference to liberation yeah right anything that spoke of liberation was removed i know galatians was removed i'm not sure about luke but yeah Anything a lot of verses, yeah. Liberation. Yes. What they left in was that which means um, 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 slaves honor your masters and so on and so forth, right? Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. That was education, by the way. Like, well, that was the crux of education, let me say. Not, may not have been the only form, but that was mm-hmm. the crux of education. So the if you teach them to submit, they will submit. Definitely. If you teach them to respect English, they, they will respect, respect English. English above their own uh, yeah. language, you know. Yeah. If you teach them that you need to follow a certain economic order to succeed, they will do it. Because education is at the core of one's identity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't go out and preach about physics because I was never trained on, on physics, you know. That's true. Um speak still on the idea of education i just wanted to bring in like a, a separate and different point you know i've seen people nowadays crash education to almost the pulp as if it's as if it's almost nothing people saying hey it's not, it's not important for me to learn how how uh the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell you know it's not important for me to learn how x plus i think y equals to mx plus c i'm like yes but no Mm-hmm. It's not important mm-hmm. for you to learn the deep depths of all of those if you're not going to specialize in any of them. 
Yes. But if you notice, a lot of these things we learn probably before we finish, let's say high school, they shape our way of tackling life's problems. I'll give an example with Pythagoras yeah. theorem. You know Pythagoras theorem, right? Mm -hmm. A squared equals to B squared plus C squared. That's the simplest way to find shortcuts in life. You know, you know that the the hypotenuse in in reference to those other two sides. If you're to take the the way of the hypotenuse only, that's the shortest way. We learned that mm -hmm. through maths. If we were to look at, I was thinking about something. I forgot about it. Ah, let's look at something that I know a lot about, which is heat or the lack thereof, because I live in Russia. I know that if I leave the way, <laughs> because I learned yeah. the laws of thermodynamics in high school, I know that if I leave the window open, I'm opening up a system whereby this system that was once hot loses its heat because um, it loses its heat to an external system. Basically, you know, mm. the room starts to become cold because I opened the windows and the heat is leaving. Therefore, if I want to remain in a warm room, and not die, I have to keep the system closed and a constant flow of heat should be within the system. You know, these are the small little things that we I learned from high school that I apply in daily life. And I feel it's important that we don't, I feel that's my problem with the way culture is drifting towards nowadays. We want to crush mm -hmm. these things as if they're useless and they yeah. you know, apparently came with the colonizer. I don't know that people with that hold those those notions yeah and that's true we should really reassess where we're moving with these because of course you're not going to specialize in physics you're not you might not specialize yeah. in philosophy but those things help you tackle the simplest of everyday yeah. problems with the depth applied to them yeah and if some people might even like have a rebuttal of saying all those things that you're talking about you could learn them with common sense but the reason why it's common sense is because you are educated at some, some certain Thank point you. in your life <laughs> that you have yeah. to close that window yeah. so that you 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 know you you contain the heat inside the room mm. or that the yeah. shortcut you don't have to go one way or the other you can just take the straightest route yeah and that's your shortest mm -hmm. distance or even yeah. learning about budgeting and stuff like this you know as much as we say it's all under common sense it's actually been through some education in one form or another so I think that's an important mm -hmm. thing for people to note and not to underestimate some of the things that were taught in school. Yeah, it's common because exactly. it's been thoroughly repeated that everyone knows it. Therefore, yeah. there was a, a lengthy and deep process of education that had to be done. I, believe, I wanted to mention something now that I'm back. I forgot to give one example. Another example of a, a people that suffered because they didn't have a certain element in a culture was uh, i forgot what time frame in history that was but there's a point in time when doctors were not washing their hands i don't know if at all you guys have read or heard about that yeah there's a point in time yep. doctors yeah doctors in the morning would attend to patients and mm -hmm. do their rounds and then in the afternoon they would go to the the maternity ward and try and you know assist in labor and midwifery and all of that and mm. as a result a lot of infants or mothers to those infants wouldn't make it pass through that stage they would die because of some sort of infection you know back then there were, yeah, yeah. they were no strong because diagnosis. The, and the transfer is almost direct like you said yeah because yeah. literally you're coming from helping one lady to, to in, in labor and you're going right to the next one. And, and maybe yeah, that other one lady yeah. had a known or unknown infection. And, and you're you, meeting, that would have been so easy. And you're also meeting other patients, someone hey, there has influenza, exactly. polio, tuberculosis. You're couriering. Yeah. You're just, bro, you're just print couriers. Yeah, the agent. Random <laughs> <DHL>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now the, the, that was a culture back then, like, you know, mm. I noticed it was a culture when I noticed that there was one doctor who experimented. He's like, maybe the problem is that we're not washing our hands. Mm. Mm. And he tried washing his hands on himself. I mean, it's a simple experiment you can conduct on yourself. So he started washing mm. his hands and he 
after every, I think after every round, after every patient to wash his hands, you know, the normal practice doctors now do. And during his rounds or whatever, there was none of that. People would, you know, hmm. if you are giving birth, you give birth, your child survives infancy. Like the infancy rate, yeah. mortality rate, it sort of like was boosted. Yeah. Now, when he did this, the other doctors were against it. I'm like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, it's literally was taking you are stealing their thunder. What thunder? <laughs> you know, you know, you know, there's there's let me give you two instances. Eh? Yeah. Um one one I I believe I read one I was told. Mm. One guy, one liberation struggle leader mm-hmm. said when fighting for liberation, I fight the oppressors with one hand. And I fight those who I'm trying to liberate with the other. Yeah. Yes. Another a, a story I heard is that it was it was a setting of one where mm-hmm. people are oppressed. I don't want to get too much into details lest I uh mosha the story. Um <laughs> <laughs> so let's say hundred people are oppressed, right? Mm-hmm. So Someone says, you know what, guys, we need to fight the oppressors. We can do it. We just need all to be together. Who is against us? Raise their hands. And then they killed the 300. That way. Now, I'm not saying we, I'm not saying let's kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> but here's but here's the issue. You know, when 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 any any culture, right, in the mm. broad perspective any culture has a paradigm right where it fits yeah and there comes a point where there is a a revolution that moves it from one paradigm to the other yeah for example at one point um um the 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 sun revolved around the earth then someone came and said no the earth revolves around the sun you know yeah um, Galileo also influenced uh, mm. revolutions, and I believe that we must we must come to a point where we understand that any culture must and will evolve. Has mm. to. How it evolves is what we can control. Mm-hmm. Um, and why it evolves. If the, and why it evolves, right? Mm. If the doctors stuck to that, uh, agreed. You know what? Let's try this. If it works, we are all going to do it. Now, because Tina, nobody can tell us every anything. Yeah, mm. it's my life, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and things fail to evolve, you know. Yeah. But we need to come to a point where, like, okay, Tino says that uh, uh, to to make sure that your your cattle multiply, you must mix maize and sugar cane, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be like, why are you giving cows sugar cane? <laughs> why you know you're wasting yeah. food <laughs> you're wasting food you're wasting food. why are you giving cows sweet things hey, you, the children should be eating sugar cane or the, you know hungry mm. children they in northern africa yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and we could have just said, okay let's try it and then you see your cows getting 100 over 100 even the bulls are giving birth you know it's mm. it's this is this wonderful you know and that's what we're failing to do yeah i mean it's look, I'm not saying everything is correct, right? Yeah. If we are wrong in the dress issue, let's discuss it and say that we are wrong. Fine, at least we have discussed it. You know, let's not say, um, I know, ah, uh, ah, those are wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he thinks he's from Russia, he can tell us what to do. What to do. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's wrong. my concern. I believe we can control how. Uh, culture evolves, right? Uh, whether we are a subject or whether we are the the the, the protagonists of the idea. yeah yeah, but we can't control if it does. We can't control the evolution itself. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, now that you've brought it all up, I feel like we have come to a place like where we can now. Uh, summarize it and put it into one bundle. And I'd like to do that by asking the question, is culture 
relevant in the 21st century? Question of the day. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it seems like a lot of like with coming with, you know, social justice and stuff like that, it seems like everyone is kind of running towards the direction of do what you want in it. And Mm -hmm. I feel like in in those circumstances, your identity as well will be lost, not just your culture, not just your values, but your identity becomes lost. And when your identity becomes lost, you become a highly conflicted person on the inside Mm -hmm. and outside. And that will not do you any favors in all in all the directions you take in your life and even for your mental health. So I think that would be kind of my take on it as to, you know, is culture relevant? Because if 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 culture becomes irrelevant, then what's next? Are morals relevant? You know, after that, you know, things become even worse. Are we relevant? <laughs> uh, 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 yes. Is, 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 the, is human life irrelevant? We're going to, we just go into that because at the end of the day, it should be, you know, we are just a tiny speck on a tiny earth, which is in a tiny solar system, which is in a very mm. tiny Milky Way you get mm. amongst billions universe. of other galaxies yeah. in a very big mm. universe, which is ever expanding, mm. apparently. So, you know, I feel like we'll end up turning into that direction and things can get quickly out of hand. This is yeah. this quote Jordan Peterson once mentioned in one of his interviews. He was like, you know, the way the way the West is drifting, especially the radical, the radical left, it's drifting in such a way that human beings are going to end up canceling each other. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's, that's not just on Twitter, eh? Yeah, no, that's not on Twitter. <laughs> 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 when he meant by cancel each other, he meant like, you know, you saying, I feel useless, cancel myself, yeah, cancel me, you know, type of stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I felt that because I think that came as a result of the, the. Ooh, I think that came as a result of the West starting to sort of like move towards a, should I say, cultureless or trying to look for the actual yeah they they actually adopted a culture of no culture where they're like yeah we can do whatever we want it's okay i don't need to i don't need to try and live in a certain way culture is a social construct social constructs are are what what do they say that 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 repressive you know and all of that and i'm like yeah but look at where you are now what do you think that is? It wasn't just vibes. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it wasn't just vibes. Tem- the vibes are temporary. <laughs> the vibes are, yeah. <laughs> Culture is forever. Yeah. Culture is forever. But also, if I was to maybe try and attempt to answer that question myself, yeah, what culture is, is, is it relevant? I think from what we discussed, maybe we can say that culture is relevant because it's always there. And mm-hmm. even a culture of no culture is a culture. Is a culture, yeah. That's a culture of yeah. lawlessness. That's a problem. Mm. Because <laughs> <laughs> the pastor gave me an interesting analogy yesterday when I was at church. He was mm-hmm. like, so here's the here's the problem with a culture of do what you want. I mm-hmm. want to do what I want, right? And I want to do what I feel is right. And I want to do what I feel that, that fulfills my soul. Now, my Simba also wants to do what is right for him. He wants to do what he feels is right and yeah. that bo- that doesn't bother him you know and and yeah. if if he feels it's right to kill me for him to be in a safe space as he would put it it's fine with it mm-hmm. he everyone should be fine with it Hakesi also maybe he has a different opinion you know feels everyone should be hanged so that he's happy <laughs> <laughs> you know that that's yeah. I don't know, that, that, that sounds like a weird fetish, but okay, go on. But that's where the world is drifting. <laughs> <laughs> of do what you want and don't let anyone yeah. judge you because, yeah. because culture is a social construct and you don't need it. Mm. And because of But that, they don't realize that that ideology is a culture in itself. Yes, yes, exactly. That's one thing. Therefore, I would conclude mm. with, the saying, with saying that I think it's important for us to have culture 
but it's also important for us to have an identity even when culture shifts yeah to know mm-hmm. who we are where we're going and why we're doing it the how part you know it always shifts that's culture how culture is always mm. the how but the mm. why that's our identity mm. you know Muruti, any I, closing remarks <laughs> i love <laughs> Muruti, i love what you are saying <laughs> um i don't want to say too much mm. but in asking the question is culture relevant in the 21st century we often end up at a place where we question the the the, the validity and the existence of culture itself mm-hmm. when we should be uh, questioning uh, the or evaluating the applicability and the relevance of culture, the current culture right? mm-hmm. of the current culture so like how i how i said in the evolution of culture have we subjected ourselves to stagnance within this evolution where we don't allow it to progress and apply mm. to today right for example simple question how does our culture deal with the matter of gender based violence mm. how does our culture deal with a a debilitating economy let me give you an example cultural practices where after the harvest uh, families would bring a portion of their <clears throat> a portion of their harvest to to mm-hmm. to 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 the center or to to the king's residence right the what point. this was for if there was a drought in future they could come and get food from there right yes so basically an emergency fund right reserve so, reserves right mm. so of course no one will go to the president's house and bring a uh, tenpulas there for, for emergency <laughs> fund but yeah. in our taxation system i get i get we are now we are now considering the evolution of mm-hmm. culture yeah in our taxation system is one or two percent of all tax uh, put aside for emergencies i mean imagine if that happened covid would have been an easy target i mean mm. we wouldn't be the targets anymore it would be the target mm. here and 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 so there are so many things we can talk about mm. but yeah. now my issue is we must um evaluate the validity not no 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 not the validity the 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 the, the applicability of culture when we speak of the relevance right yeah uh, when you watch sarafina i mean you can't you can't extrapolate lessons and take them as is when you're dealing with a, a, a teacher who's who, who who fails you just because you don't like him you know mm-hmm. um it, yeah, it, yeah it, it's, it's a matter of principle not yeah. not not practice you, you 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 get what i'm saying yeah yeah so not to the answer to my question is culture as a phenomenon mm-hmm. is relevant as it is manifested currently it may not be but it can be if we if we if we if we if we catalyze the evolution in our era mm. mm. culture is a phenomenon <laughs> now nah, i captured that culture uh-huh. I captured that <laughs> i captured that amen <laughs> you yeah Praise boss Jesus. don't even lie <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yo this this was such an interesting conversation guys yo mm-hmm. i feel like we should we should organize another episode because there were a lot more things that we could have possibly discussed but then you know because of the constrictions of time and all that yeah. we might have to organize another episode for that so um guys thank you so much for watching uh, leave a like please leave a comment also if possible and subscribe to the channel if you're new um we also have um uploads on our audio po- on our audio platforms which will be down in the description below uh so as i said thank you once again for watching we'll see you guys in the next episode hakesi would you like to close and maybe give them your social media handles i was hoping you'd say that <laughs> <laughs> cloud uh, Oh. Um, on 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 Facebook, my name is Hakesi Kabiwe, as it is written there, as you see it. Um, on Instagram, uh, the name is Hakesi Kabiwe. Um, the handle, I 
believe can be under the description not under the description in the description yeah, below the hey yeah, english <laughs> <laughs> not our mother um, but it's sergi junior underscore tabi webet you'll see it there um follow me i believe from there uh, you will see any 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 spreading out um if there is any but those are the main two all right all right all right i think that's it for the all episode right. It's been me, the sole engineer and Hakeas Titabiwe on this episode. Uh, you know, see you guys in a bit. Take good care of yourselves and peace. Thank you, folks. Sanitize. <laughs> and sanitize. <laughs> <laughs> peace, guys. See you guys. See you in the next episode. <laughs>